Hello, how are you? I haven't done a live for a long time, so if you've missed my lives, let me know, so I'll feel more motivated to, to make some more of them. I've been very busy, had a lot of personal stuff, but I love doing it, and I always come back to it, so just just uh, let me know if you've missed them. So today I'm going to talk about the the gut and the adrenal glands. Where, where do you start? Which one do you focus on? Oh, I've got a bit of lag there. Which one do you focus on? Where do you get started? And this is kind of like a chicken and egg kind of thing because they both have such a significant impact on each other and I can see why people struggle with this for so long because if you do one and not the other, you don't make much progress. So then you swap and you're like, oh, I'm going to do adrenals now instead of gut and you don't make much progress. The thing is you have to do these both at the same time. But I would say that I, I would go for 65% of the effort needs to be on the gut and 35% of the effort on the adrenals. Is that the right? Is that the right math? Yeah, that's the right math. So the primary focus needs to be the gut. There's so many different mechanisms going on in the gut and with the adrenals that reflect on each other. So anytime you've got increased intestinal permeability, you're going to have endotoxins, lipopolysaccharides coming in, and that's just straight up going to cause inflammation, and that's a stress to your body. Your body cannot differentiate between physiological stress, um, biological stress chemical stress mental stress emotional stress st emotional stress see there's a lot of stress it gets stressful saying it your body can't distinguish and it has the same the same reaction to all of these different types of stress which is just the generic stress response increased cortisol increased adrenaline reduced digestive function increased intestinal permeability it doesn't matter so all of these stresses are going to affect your your gut the example that i really like to use is if you measure the intestinal permeability so the leaky gut the amount of leaky gut that somebody has before a marathon and after they run a marathon it goes from being completely normal healthy levels to after the marathon they've got the same level of intestinal permeability as somebody who has Crohn's disease so for those of you that don't know what Crohn's disease is this is like 10 bloody bowel movements a day mucus in the stool super high levels of inflammation and you can do that just by running a marathon like the amount of stress that puts on the body causes your intestinal permeability to increase that much so super linked anytime you do anything stressful it's gonna increase cortisol increase adrenaline which is increasing your intestinal permeability so you're going to get more leaky gut which is going to cause more of these inflammatory molecules to leak in which is going to then cause stress in your body which increases your leaky gut so more of them leak in it's a vicious circle on the other side of things, your, one of the most stressful things to your adrenal glands is not having enough nutrients. And I mean macronutrients and micronutrients. So one of the biggest, 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 biggest issues to see is people not eating enough fat. Your adrenal glands use saturated fat. So saturated fat comes into your body. Your liver turns that into cholesterol. And then your body, your liver, like packages that up into LDL and HDL and different sort of they're like trucks that carry cholesterol around the body so it's LDL in this case they take it to the adrenal glands the adrenal glands say oh we use this cholesterol to make testosterone and estrogen and basically every steroid and sex hormone in your whole body so it delivers it all of this here and if you don't have these ingredients your body feels stressed because it can't make the stress hormones that it needs so making sure that you're eating enough fat, enough protein, and you're getting enough of these nutrients in is really important for your adrenal glands to function and be healthy. But if your gut's leaky, if it's damaged, if it's not, if you've got low stomach acid and you don't have enough digestive enzymes and your bile's off and your motility's weak and your mucosa's damaged, you're not going to absorb any of your nutrients. Even You're not going to digest them. You're not going to absorb them. And then your adrenal glands are panicking for another reason, which, guess what? Increases intestinal permeability, reduces stomach acid, reduces the amount of enzymes you make. So you get stuck in this really vicious loop. I would prioritize the gut. I would prioritize the gut, but you have to be doing both of these things at the same time. You have to support the adrenal glands. But you have to remember, the adrenal glands, they're on a... Think of it like a seesaw. So it's like this. So you've got adrenal glands on one side and you've got thyroid function on the other. So if your adrenal glands are functioning really high, so you're really stressed, you've got loads of stress, you've got very, you've got lots of leaky gut, you've got a really stressful job, you've got so much stuff going on, your adrenal glands come up and that means your thyroid down here comes low. Low thyroid function means low stomach acid production. It means low body temperature. It means low immunity. And it's it's on a it's on a it's on a seesaw so if you can calm the stress down you can reduce the permeability you can reduce the the work stress the physical stress say you're doing high intensity or you're running you're running marathons you can bring this stress down 
thyroid function comes back up, so you improve all of your gut function, you improve all of your metabolism. The thyroid is literally directly connected with metabolism. So anything that you do that improves your thyroid function is going to improve your, your metabolic flexibility. So calming the stress down is really important. This is going to reduce the amount of steroid and stress hormones that you're producing. So you're going to need less cortisol, less adrenaline. And as a result, your gut permeability will reduce. So that's improving. Your stomach acid increases. Your digestive enzymes increase. Your intolerances go away because your body's got more digestive capacity. So what's the answer to this really tricky question? I hate to say it, it's both. You can't do one and not the other. You have to do this holistically. The body, the body doesn't have a digestive system. It doesn't have adrenal glands. It doesn't have all of these systems that we compartmentalize. It's a holistic organism. And if you don't approach it in that holistic mindset, you're going to have problems. So it even goes beyond the physical. Yeah, your adrenals need to be functioning and you need to be eating the right diet and you need to be working on your gut function. But if you, if you absolutely hate your job and you wish you were dead, like your body will do that for you. If you can't set healthy boundaries, your gut barrier function will be decreased. Like there's so many layers to this that it goes so far beyond the physical. But for now, I just wanted to touch on that physical and say, you have to do them both. But really the gut, the gut is where you start and then adrenal glands and then everything else from there. So hope you found it interesting. If you like these lives, if you like, you found this informative, let me know. It will inspire me to do more. So I'll see you soon. Got a call. Bye bye.